manifesto for the youth, especially because they'll be tackling one of the major problems affecting youth in Ghana, which is unemployment. So I have Henry Nana Boache on phone with us. Good morning, Henry, and you're welcome. All right. And I also do have George Pariado, and he's joining us via Zoom. And so good morning to you, George, as well. It's been seven days, George. We haven't heard from you after Nanabi put out that challenge asking for you to also list your youth development policies. Why has it taken so long? Good morning, Bella. And good, good morning, morning to your press. Um, I'm not sure I am subject to the whims and caprices of Henry Nana Boache. Mm. At the appropriate time, the youth wing of the NDC will outline our various policies that we have for young people in this country. We are undergoing an important exercise in our electioneering processes. That is a registration exercise, and that is where our focus is. Mm. So for Henry Nana Boache to invite us to the table at this time, it is an invitation we will gladly take, but we will not take it based on his steps. At the appropriate time, when registration is over, we will be outlining the policies of His Excellency President John Ramon Mahama to the good people of this country. We know okay. that the NDC has a superior youth employment record. And before today's program is over, mm. we'll just tell you a few. But after the registration processes, we will be hosting a presser where we will outline all the things we did between 2013 to 2017 on the 7th of January when we left office. We'll also okay. be exposing the inadequacies and the, and the inaccuracies in what Henry Anabashi puts out. What he's done is to engage in the politics of the old, bundle okay. figures together and throw them out, figures that cannot be substantiated. So I can assure the good people listening to us and the good people watching us this morning, that right after the registration process is over, the youth wing of the NBC will put out our policy positions on what we intend to do for the youth mm. and what we did for the youth when we had the opportunity to govern this country. I see. And we're looking forward to that. But Anabi, I mean, of course, um, you've heard what George has to say about the figures uh, that have been put out. 60 uh, policies outlined by yourself and your team, the National Youth Wing, under the NPP. And so he says that these are just numbers you've bandied about. And really, they are not indicative of what really is on the ground. What do you have to say about this? Good morning, uh, once morning. again. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Good, good, good. Um, um, good morning to you, Apare, um, um, as well. Now, now first of all, um, the National Youth Wing of the NBC position mm -hmm. obviously is a defeatist position, and it shows clear, and it's a manifestation of how they don't have anything to tell the youth. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, it is not as if the former president is a fresh candidate. Uh, it is not as if he's not uh, been given a certain position of responsibility before. Bella, he's been vice president before. When you're vice president, you are in charge of the economic management team. And then afterwards, he became the president. So he served four-year mandate as well. So what we are requesting for is a very simple thing. And you see... Mm -hmm. He has also been given again another mandate by the party to represent the party. Okay. And give the for the past two years. So, oh, the North NDC can tell us, the Onions, mm -hmm. that they are now putting things together. They are now going to shop for some achievements here and there. They are now going to look into the books. It, it, it's amazing and it's a very defeatist position because, you see, once you have been given the opportunity as the president and the vice president before, you mm -hmm. should be able to tell us something. And for me, um, my, my colleague, my brother, has failed woefully and is not giving the Ghanaian youth that hope, that belief. Because as politicians, and as young politicians to be specific, we need to give hope to the Ghanaian youth. That is the okay. more reason why for our research team, we have come... Um, we are putting together close to about 200 achievements. I mean, impactful policies that have far-reaching and positive benefits for the youth. You are saying so what? 200 achievements and then you are saying for the youth? Not a I mean, these are very viable facts. Bella, for instance, you mentioned the one district, one factory. Mm -hmm. And I can mention to you a lot of... Hello? I can hear you, but I was asking, did you say 200 policies that have been implemented 
by your party yeah, yeah, for yeah, the youth. We are youth. talking about from our research and then going through all the departments, the agencies, the ministry, and the presidency. We have some two hundred. Okay. Two hundred things that we can point to that these policies, these implementations, these programs have gotten some far-reaching, impactful. Okay. Than the, for the youth, and we only put out sixty. So there are so many other. Uh, impactful policies we did not even um, include in our first okay. challenge. Now, now yeah, so out of these 60 that you have put out, I would like us to take a few of them. Uh, we'll take a closer look at some of them. I mean, you mentioned NAPCO, you mentioned free SHS, teacher training allowances, and all of that. And so we'll take a few of them before I even bring George in so that he can respond to that. Because he says that, again, you have bandied figures, and really they, they cannot be substantiated. Let's start off with NAPCO. How much have you spent so far? You're saying that about 100,000 uh, graduate unemployed youth have benefited from NAPCO. How much have you spent so far? In terms of money, the allowances were paid. Yes. Yeah, NAPCO was launched right, um, almost about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then on a monthly basis, because we had 99,742. Okay. Right, almost 100,000. You have what, 94,000? Each person receives 700 Ghana cities. Okay. Nana B, can you, can you hear me? 700 Ghana cities. Hello, Nana B. Nana B, sorry to interrupt. I really couldn't hear you. You put out a figure. You mentioned something about 94,000 or so. I just wanted to uh, get that right. And so if you can start from that point again. No, I said 99,742. Okay. Exactly. And each month, every beneficiary receives 700 Ghana cities. Okay. And you see, interestingly, I was part of the operations team the day we were launching NAPCO. Mm -hmm. And Bella, I had testimonies from finished universities, polytechnics, or now technical universities, and other tertiary institutions, and they have not even gotten 50 Ghana cities a month, 100 Ghana cities a month. I spoke to this young lady who had a baby. Mm hmm just about a year, seven months year old baby. And she was so appreciative of the fact that government could put in such initiatives. And indeed, the interesting aspect is that my, oh, we have a lot of NDC young people who also benefited, a lot of NDC polling station youth organizers, constituency youth organizers. Oh, no. Okay. And that, this job or this opportunity was not meant only for mm. the new patriotic party youth. Okay. Of course, it was for the Ghanaian youth. Okay. Now, the right. reason... So, then, then we asked the NDC, so what intervention did you also put in place? Okay. Because now, talking why, about... the NDC, we had... What? ...compared to us, the Unemployment Association, and so what intervention did the NDC put in place? Okay. I mean, this is a huge thing. We will ask George that, but talking about... ...to almost 100,000 young people... Nana B, you have yes, given Nana. us a figure of 99,732, but the figure that you put uh, included in the 60, um, you know, policies, achievements that you have put out there, you mentioned 100,000. Now, I remember that there was uh, a press release uh, that was put out stating exactly that 840 million Ghana cities had been spent on NAPCO beneficiaries um, as allowances. So if you are saying that 99,732 of these employees have received, um, you know, benefits from being employed. What happened to the 268? Because there's a figure that has been given, 840 million. If you calculate it, that means that you have been able to get um, every single member uh, receive their, you know, uh, benefits for one year. But you are saying 99,732. So if we're saying that, then 268 people have not been accounted for, yet monies have been disbursed based on this. What happened to that? No, no, I, I don't know what you are seeking to achieve, Bella, but then if you were talking about these figures, obviously, I mean, we can um, just contact NAPCO and then get these official figures. These okay. were figures, I mean, the most important thing, the beneficiaries, and then um, interestingly, too, and then ask the structure. No, no, but the, you are saying, I mean, region, again, you are region saying region that 100,000... have the breakdown per region. So if we are talking about these figures, I mean, clearly, I could always contact... Uh, okay, so you don't have the figures as to what happened to the... That are not here with me. I, I told the producer 
I was even traveling. I was even on my way to Sir John's one. No problem. I understand. I just yes. wanted to get clarification on that. Because, again, like I said, some amount of money was said to have been disbursed. But no, you are also saying that 99,000 of these people these have figures, benefited. You have a question for this verification. They can be given to you, mm -hmm. but I don't have these figures with me as I speak. Okay. But All I right. I think the figures and um, the pillars we can look up to are the numbers of young people who have benefited and then the amount of money they receive monthly. Okay. But no problem. The figures you are talking about, I can always have it for you any day, any time. Okay. We, we will get to that later when you are able to give me yes, the I can, figures. I can, I can always provide those figures for no you. No problem. We will do that. But right. the NDC says that NAPCO is a branch of the tree um, of developments that they had when they were in power. And so you just decided to take a bit of it and, you know, rebrand it and make it yours. And so they don't ah, think that this which, is... Which, which, which branch of a tree? Well, he says under the YEA. No, you see, that is a problem um, or the, 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 the lack of focus the NDC has. Look, YEA has a lot of mandate, a lot of modules. This particular program was structured in such a way to suit the graduates. Mm. For YEA, you can have people who don't even have certificates, who have not even uh, um, sat in the classroom before. There are a lot of people who are, even now as I speak, especially the uh, school uh, support program, in fact, there are no certificates involved. The sanitation program, there are no certificates involved. Um, Arabic in tutor, um, the Arabic instructors, it means you may have learned um, Arabic. So these are different models. Okay. The NAPCO was particularly structured, was particularly designed, right, to mm -hmm. capture graduates. That is how come if you check the models under NAPCO, we have the Hill Ghana capturing the nurses' trainees. Mm -hmm. We have the... Um, 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 uh, the, the, the food, um, uh, um, we have the food section, which is capturing those who are in, into the agri sector. We have those who are into the revenue Ghana, that is, those who are into the revenue Ghana, those who were captured under GRA, and a lot more. Okay. So this particular program is specifically designed. So I don't know why they would want to confuse themselves with the fact that it is a branch of a particular tree, which tree. Okay. No. But if that's the case, and we lost George, so we just got him. I'll bring him in shortly. If that's the case, now the, the, the NAPCO Trainees Association of Ghana are petitioning the president, of course, uh, to move them from just temporary employees to permanent employees. I do understand that some figures have been put out. About 11,000 of the NAPCO trainees have received permanent postings. However, the rest are still yet to receive permanent postings after they're done, um, you know, with the recruitment. And so what happens to that? No, I think this is even a big relief. I mean, um, the, the, the primary focus, and the president even gave a directive, that the NAPCO um, beneficiary should be, um, 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 should be a priority when we are mechanizing um, these young people. And even the 11,000 that you just put out, I think it needs to be updated because the last time I checked with NAPCO, uh, they have almost about 18,000 to 20,000 people who okay. have been mechanized, who have full employment as I speak. This figure is somewhere around uh, January or February or so. So we may even have to update. Yes, in fact, that is even the intention of the program. The intention of the program is to have some intervention for the young person who completed um, university some years back He's still sitting at home. So the intervention is for you to prep the person, prepare the person for the next three years. Okay. With government intervention and also with the private intervention, with the um, structures in place to mechanize these people. So for me, it is even refreshing that now we have almost about um, almost 20,000 young people who have been mechanized. Okay. I mean, that clearly displays the focus of the program. So I'm happy that right. this was an intervention to the massive unemployment rate that we have in this country. Yes. Okay. Let me bring George in. George, sorry for keeping you waiting. We lost you at a point, and so I needed to make sure that you were connected. But Nanabi says that NAPCO, unlike what you had said earlier, that it was a branch of a tree, um, you know, from the NDC's policies, it is actually an ingenious idea from the NPP and not necessarily um, what, what exactly you said. What do you make of that? Bella. Sometimes, turn on a beat to be a bit patient when he's speaking. People are listening. It is not a thousand competition that we are having here. We are debating issues. When you talk about a narco, well, let me return. Okay. Page 185, paragraph 991 of the 2016 budget. And if you indulge me, let me just 
George, you have to come again. I think we, we couldn't really hear you. If you can come again. Okay. I'm saying that the argument about narco, the MPP is noted for coming out with slogans and renaming projects mm -hmm. or programs they came to inherit. And if you indulge me, I want to George, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I think when you move a little away from your phone, we can barely hear you. So if you can kindly please try and get closer to it. Carry on. Hello. Yes, carry can on. Can Yes. Okay, what I'm saying is that on the argument of NACO, the NPP does very well in renaming programs they came to inherit. Mm -hmm. And if you indulge me, I will quote from the budget statement. Pages. 185, paragraph 991. Mr. Speaker, National Can you move whatever it is you're reading closer? Because when you try to read from the other side, we don't hear anything. Yes, please. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. So you were just quoting something. Yes, I was saying that per the, per the 2016 budget statement, mm -hmm. that was the inception of NACO. We called it the Community Improvement Program, CIP. And it was supposed to have catered for programs that were six different areas, namely waste and sanitation, security mm -hmm. services, community teaching assistant, community health assistant, youth in afforestation, and then youth in APRA. This is the program the NPP came to inherit. And this is the 2016 budget statement, pages 185, 991. This is the program they came to inherit and then renamed the NAPCO. Granted, they claim they've employed 100,000 people. I heard you quizzing on the numbers. The numbers they put out there, and we keep saying that the numbers are not real. The numbers are not real because 100,000 people have not been given jobs under NAPCO. The other argument you are saying is... You're saying they have not been given jobs? <laughs> yes. But, but he, he just people. mentioned that they are even waiting for some more figures because it looks as if maybe about 20,000 or more would have received permanent postings under NAPCO. And I'm, I'm telling you that he should show us, he should come with better facts and figures. But the numbers they put out there, based on our check, the 100,000 number they bundle around, just this morning, the, you, you were able to point out the priorities of about 260 something. That mm -hmm. differs from the 100,000 he puts out there. What did the NDC do? NDC employed 23,000 youths under the Youth in Agriculture Program initiative between 2013 and 2016. Under the Rural Enterprise Project, the NDC created 21,000 jobs across the country between January 2013 and 2015. The Department of Cooperatives registered a total of 1,757 youth, youth cooperatives in all, in all 10 regions, and a total of 34,657 jobs across the country. The Opportunities Industrialization Center, which I believe you know about, also created another 21,000 jobs. And all this you can find in the budget statement of 2016 from pages 185. Mm -hmm. These are facts and these are figures that we did. But you see, to talk about youth development, we must first look at the argument in a broader context. Okay. And before you yeah. able to you know, assess the achievements of the NPP, you must first look at what they promised the young people of this country in 2017. Mm -hmm. When you take the manifesto of the NPP on pages 47 to 48, the NPP made 17 promises. And if we choose to go through all the 17, one after the other, you realize that all 17 achievements, all, all 17 promises they made in the manifesto to young people, not even one can you say that they have achieved. Then the NPP is quick to tell you that the NDC took away nursing and teacher training allowances, and that they have restored teacher training allowances. The question we ask is to what end? The argument about teacher training and nursing allowances is one that we must look at in a broader context. In how? When Explain to us, because I mean, it is very so, clear that the NDC took away the teacher training allowances. No, when we took away the teacher training allowances, we migrated them onto the student loan scheme because the, 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 the legal framework that regulated teacher training was changed to, to colleges of education. Mm -hmm. And when, what we did was we were looking at quality in education. When we took away training, when we took away the, the, the training allowances, we also introduced what we call the feeding grants. At the time we were taking away training allowances, every teacher 
had to take posting. So in September of every year, once schools were done, teachers were automatically posted to start work. When the allowances were taken away, we gave them feeding grants. And when we were paying allowances at that time, we were paying 350 Ghana cities every month for mm -hmm. 12 months. With the entry, and then we also took away the quota system. What the quota system sought to do was that if 60 students were qualified to enter teacher training college, because government could not afford to pay all 60, government came out with what we call the quota system. So instead of admitting 60 students, mm -hmm. What government did was give admission to 20 students because it was on only 20 students that government could adequately pick in and then also support with the allowances. We took away that quota system. So we expanded access for a lot of Ghanaian youth, and it's better for any country to develop for the empowering of young people. It is two things. It is about education and then healthcare. Mm -hmm. The NDC has invested more in education in this country than any other single government. The NDC is the only government that sought to establish a university in every region. We created one in the Volta region, you have, and then we created in there in the Bruno region, when we had 10 regions. At the time we were leaving office, we had secured funding and work had commenced on the Eastern Regional University. Mm -hmm. What universities mm -hmm. does is to one, come with jobs, come with opportunities, and then it also comes to train and empower people for any youth development, for any youth agenda. What is at the center of it is empowerment. And you can only empower young people through education. So now let's come to the education sector and then look at our record and our performance. What Nanabi has done with 60 achievement is he's taking them one by one, one by one. Sometimes, if you even go through all the six, you realize that most of them are repetition. And then like, he also makes a uh, last statement. That like what exactly? Because if you're saying most of them are repeated, like what exactly? When, 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 when you come to a rule of number, and then you come down to youth employment. You realize that the figures from NAPCO and then the models that are being implemented under NAPCO, most of them are the same uh, models that are being implemented under the YEA. But what Nanabi should realize is that until the NDZ came, the YEA, um, they used to call it youth employment, they had a name for it. We came to create a legal framework. The Act 887 was passed by the NDC. And then there was no secure source of funding for it. The NDC established a secure source of funding for the um, for the YEA. And at the time we were leaving office, 120,000 jobs had been created under the YEA. And if you indulge me, I will give you a breakdown of the figures. Please under do. Under the sanitation, we have engaged 45,000 people. Under the security services model, we had engaged 5,000 people. Under the community teaching assistance, we had engaged 10,000 people. Under the paid intensive program, we had engaged 5,000 people. Under the health extension workers program, we had engaged another another 10,000 workers. Mm -hmm. Under the youth in agri-businesses, agri we had engaged 20,000 people. And under the trade and vocation, we have also engaged another 20,000. And then what we call the vacation jobs, had engaged 5,000. But like when you put this total together, uh -huh. there was 120,000 that were created for young people under the YEA alone. Okay. Under the community improvement, which is today in Africa. Under that one, because it was the capital George, you, you, if you move away from your phone, then we can't hear you. Sorry, but... I have not moved away, unfortunately. Well, you're looking away. So I think when you look away, you know, there's a distance between your mouth and the... Exactly, so... I, I can understand that. Yes, thank what you. What we are saying is that under, under that, we call it a community improvement program. And under that, under the agriculture program, we have been... We had engaged almost 20,000 young people in that respect. Now, the argument about the NDC did not employ nurses and teachers. When I be crazy, the impression that the NDC did not engage nurses and teachers. That is another fallacious lie. And you see, from this document, I believe your viewers can see it. This is a document from this is the midterm expenditure framework. Ministry, Ministry of, Education. of Education. Okay. And then this is also. Health sector in Ghana, facts and figures, signed by Nsiyan Sari. If you look at the numbers, and I keep saying that, say that he bundles figures around and then lies to the people of Ghana. He says that they have recruited 84,500. That is another big fat line. Based on their own documents. This is the midterm development plan from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. This document. 
We have deployed 19,951 teachers. Okay. 19,951 teachers. And you can get this document online so that we can talk about the fact that we are telling you tonight. What the NDC did. What the NDC did. Uh huh. Uh, Wrap up on this government. for me so I can bring Nana B in to respond to these accusations when, when, when you've made. We were in when we were in government, every September, teachers from training colleges were automatically employed. We did not have any license exams to stop them and hold them back for two years for the gain employment. We did not have what we call compulsory national service. So teachers right from school, when schools were done, September that same year, two months after staying home, we started working. Our figures between 2013 to 2016 at the time we were leaving office was at 41,185. Okay. A bit of a struggle hearing you, George. But but coming coming back to the licensure <laughs> exams. Now again, when you read um, you know, the sixty points that the Nabi and the youth wing put um, you know, out there, they are saying that the licensure exams, for example, has uh, given the teachers some level of respect. Because in the past, there was not really any kind of respect. So at least if the doctors are writing exams and they are getting their uh, certificates as a result, and that indicates that they have qualified uh, professionally, then if teachers have been given that opportunity as well, that enables us to separate you know, the, the, the good from the bad. And so is that not a good thing? Bella, let me ask you. Your teachers who taught you in primary school, they didn't write any licensial exams. They are bad. Have they not turned you out to be who you are today? There is another fadler, is it? This is all they do. When you say that the essential exams is what is going to give teachers that level of respect they deserve, are we telling teachers that they did not take the essential exams and they do not have the kind of respect that these new teachers are going to get? What, of what essence? There are better ways of assessing people. And it does not take another licensial exams by a teacher who has gone through school, passes exams, passes exit exams, gone through mentorship, and have been put out there to teach. Mm -hmm. You don't need the licensial exams to say that this teacher is now more qualified. But the teach. same thing applies Our in the medical field. Us, right from primary school. Be Be Bella, 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 Bella. What, what applies in the medical field? Once you leave medical school, mm -hmm. leave, let's, not, let, 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 let's not create an impression that what teachers have gone through or the kind of training that has been given to teachers in the classroom is not adequate enough to prepare them for the fact that when, when the NDC was in power, when we realized that teachers needed to top up, we, we introduced additional programs of leadership. We, we, we introduced programs that built and sought to expand the horizons of teachers. That didn't mean we were going to take a licensial exam. We, we, for instance, when we realized that we needed more math and science teachers, we mm -hmm. came up with a program that equipped them and trained them additionally so that they can be prepared for the task ahead. Because I believe and I understand that education is not static. There mm -hmm. are new trends. So when we realized that things were changing, we invested in that area. Teachers do not need licensial exams. They introduced this licensial exams and this compulsory national service because of lack of money pay teachers. They should tell the Ghanaian people the truth. When the teacher takes the licensial exam, it's another seven or eight months before the results is put out. And then they are compelled to the compulsory national service. So when he leaves school, it takes you two years. Just last week, there was a notification out by the Ministry of Education calling for teachers who completed school in 2017-2018 mm -hmm. to apply. What it simply means is that they've been home for two years without jobs, without any allowances. And it is a way of just holding them back. It is because they restored their allowances to them. They don't have the money to employ them. Immediately school is done. So the licensial exam is just a stopgap measure to hold back teachers. The national service that has been introduced Every teacher that goes through the colleges of education, one year before you leave school, you spend another six months in the community engaging what they call the mentorship program so that they learn on the job. If that is not national service, then I don't know what national service is. So, so to, to, to come back and ask them to go and do national service, what the NDC is saying is that when we come and we are assuring teachers, we will cancel that licensial exam. It's a cancerous exam. But this whole back and forth, this whole back and forth, because NDC is in power, we believe in this policy, and so we implement it. NPP comes and says, we don't believe in this, and so we're going to scrap it and introduce a new policy. NDC says, when we come back, we're going to cancel this new policy and restore the old policy. This back and forth, have you all stopped to think about how it affects the people 
who are supposed to be benefiting from the policies and the confusion that we're putting out there? But Bella, the NDC just did not get up and decide that we made a council. We have engaged, and I, I believe that you followed developments with our flag bearer. Okay. We've engaged the various teacher unions. We've engaged even the students in schools. We've engaged TAG and the various associations of the teacher unions. It is what they are telling us, that they don't need this licensial exam. How, what about the compulsory national service? Okay. They spent six months already in the field teaching. It is just a waste of time. So when you are paying them national service salary, the national service salary is about six or 700 Ghana cities. When the teacher starts teaching, his basic salary at the beginning of the service is about 1,600, 1,700. What we are saying is that let's give these people real jobs because they've already done their national service in the field. And this is what we are saying. Not, like, okay. As, as, to, as to whether we don't think about them, it is an argument that I will put right, I'll put forth right. What we are saying is that we've engaged them and they are telling us. And you can also, on your own, speak to the teacher unions. Okay. To the students, it's, they don't need this licensure for them. For them, they feel it's a cancer that is eating them away and it should be stopped. And we are assuring them that when we are given the opportunity, we will stop it when come 2021. Nana B. So you've listened to what George has to say, especially about the licensure exams and, of course, the other issues that he raised concerning the 60 uh, points you outlined that has helped the youth of the country, particularly the licensure exams. He says that the teacher unions say they don't want it. What do you have to say about this? Because you are also saying that it has given the teachers a certain level of respect. Nana B, can you hear me? Please, put out, please. Right. I mean, first of all, he mentioned that they recruited 120,000 YE benefits. And then you, you were you mentioned some figures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is, um, let me, uh, yes, graphic.com GH. This is dated January 7, 2017. YEA deletes 16,839 post names. And what he put out there is palpable falsehood. Now, press statement on the state of the Youth Employment Agency addressed by the acting chief executive officer on the 7th of June, 2017. Now, this is it. The YEA was equipped with only 53,000 beneficiaries. So the figure, because you know what YEA did? Immediately, the new government came in. What they did was that they did a head count. Mm. A head count. And they only got 63,000. So the figure that Oparabu is putting out, mm -hmm. 120,000, is palpable falsehood. Okay. And the majority of these people were ghost names. There were people who were sitting somewhere, then they would go and pick, then they would pay them ghost names. So but if you're saying they were ghost names, do you have any evidence to indicate that those were that actually is the ghost names? I'm showing you. Okay. That the YEA did a profit, a head count of every single beneficiary, every single beneficiary, and then they came to this figure. So clearly, Operado is lying. That is number one. Number two, mm -hmm. when the nursing training and the teacher training, they were saying that, please don't cancel the allowance. At the point, the union even wrote a petition to the former president. Mm -hmm. And then he said, no, he was not giving if he was going to cost him the presidency, he was still going to go ahead with the cancellation. Today, the former president in his campaign is saying when he is given the opportunity, he will not revisit the earlier policy which sought to cancel the, um, the, the, the allowance. Mm -hmm. And apparently the youth organizer is still rationalizing that. So is he trying to tell us? That the cancellation was good, and then even when you are giving another mandate, they are still going to go ahead and then cancel it. Is that what he's saying? Because he sits there, and then he <laughs> says that, yes, indeed, it was rationalized. It was a good thing. They were put on student loans. Mm -hmm. For that matter, it was a very good policy that the NDC canceled. Meanwhile, the flag bearer, who is the former president, is moving around, telling these same beneficiaries that when I come, I will continue on with the allowances, I'm not going to cancel it anymore. So what is the youth leader saying? Okay. It appears that he is confusing so many things. Now, if you are talking about some of these beneficiaries, again, I've disputed that. Mm -hmm. But then I asked him, 
under their tenure. They said that because of IMF conditionalities, we could not employ. Now, from 2017, it's it the same teacher he's talking about. We have recruited, as of last year, 23,454. Okay. Now, the financial clearance we have gained for this year alone is 18,000. So you just need to add that to the 53,000 I just spoke about. Okay. As you can, during the NDC era, how many teachers were they even able to recruit? And indeed, even the teachers, some of the teachers they even put on some allowances and some uh, by, 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 by temporary contracts. What they did was that a teacher will work for just about three years and they will pay that teacher three months. We came in and we canceled that policy. Now, ask him again, but for the health sector, mm -hmm. right, when you're talking about medical officers, house officers, specialists, physician assistants, nurses, medical herbalists, support staff, house officers, and then allied health professionals. In 2017 alone, when they went before 2017, they could not even recruit because of the same IMF conditionality. In 2017, we recruited 10,061. In okay. 2018, we, I mean, a total of all of these professionals I just mentioned. 2018, we recruited 11,029. 2019, we recruited 40,201. But Nanabi, and then all these numbers, again, yes. like I said, George says that they are just numbers that you're mentioning, and there's no, really no proof. These are very figures because, you see, these employment will go through the system, and they must be paid. So you go to the finance ministry, they will tell you the number of people they are paying. You go to the Ministry of Health, they will tell you the number of people they have recruited and people who have gotten financial clearances. These recruitments are hinged on financial clearance. But perhaps probably you don't even know what you're talking about. But even at the same because time... You cannot just recruit. Yeah, you but you're mentioning all these numbers. But over the last few months, we've seen a number of graduate teachers complain about their, um, you know, postings, complain about them not receiving the allowances, and a lot of other things. And so if we're putting out these numbers... Which allowance are you talking about? Which allowance? No, but I'm talking about the graduate teachers. I remember there was a time when we interviewed them, and they even talked about postings. They've been home for years, uh, for months, and they have not received any postings, and they but were petitioning the, the president. Is that Bella, if NDC had even recruited half of these numbers, we would not have been in this position. In fact, most of the people we recruited are back loss. There are some who even finished 2013, 2014, 2015. They were not recruited. 2016. They are backlogs. That is how come every. In fact, when you look at the recent release from G, uh, GES, they have stated a particular part. That is a 2017 batch. Those who are not taking. So if NBC had even recruited even half of the numbers, the backlogs, we would not have been where we are. I mean, there are still some who are home currently, and they are still receiving messages and daily. Are, and Bella, we cannot recruit them, but that is what the government is doing. So we are talking about our achievement, what we have been able to do in less than four years. And you just oppose that to what the NDC did. And then you notice that they were given eight year mandate, and it is, it is nothing to write home about. Okay. That is what we are talking about. Let, I mean, you also mentioned about the quota system. Yes. You see, you should not confuse things. The quota system was to evenly apportioning our nursing training to the schools. So the quota system had nothing to do with the allowances. Nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the allowances. So please, we should not again confuse the issues. The quota system is a different policy that sought mm. to evenly distribute the nursing training to the various nursing training colleges that we had. And indeed, Ghana is one, one of the foremost countries that are churning out professionals in terms of nurses. Mm -hmm. We've done so well in that regard. So it was never about cutting numbers so that we can pay allowances. So please, we need to also be updated about that information. And then again, let's, let's enter this particular arena. Okay. I've been hearing the NDC saying that they started progressively free SHS. I mean, this this is, that was a propaganda free SHS you are talking about. Do you know why? Tell me, Nana B. This is the NDC, a party that has a policy of orchestrating almost about 200 adverts nationwide against free SHS. They said that it was not possible and that we had to put up all infrastructure before. Today, the president is given the opportunity. He did not even wait for the final year of the four-year tenor before he implemented that. The same year he was given the opportunity, that same year he implemented Now, you are saying that we are giving some eight-year mandate and then you implemented your final year and then you say that it is very students. But, but, free. And do you know something, Bella? 
But no, no, be, even with the even money, with the SHS, money, free SHS, even with WASI, we have experienced a reduction in the number of students who are even writing the exams. Another government, thirty-five million. They did not believe in it. So you see, that, that question now, as we speak, one point two million young people are benefiting from this policy. In mm. fact, this is by the time we were uh, the WASI candidate exit, and then the BEC. Um, candidates also enter, mm -hmm. we would have should be 1.6 million young people benefiting from the free HSS alone. But we have so less we students writing the WASI as expected, uh, you know. Policies. And he, Bella, let me also enter another please. My time and is up. I, um, I have to wrap up, unfortunately. I'm being counted down. Bella, you so wrap up on this for me. He spoke, he said so many things. I mean, I mean, and he mentioned issues that had, that had nothing to do with the impact on the youth. And Bella, you see, let me mention, let me come to scholarship and then please I'll just Before you even come to scholarship, can we just quickly talk about the ASEMPA budget? I mean, it, is, it is a youth oriented. Nana B, can you hear me? Everywhere. Now. Nana B, before you yeah, come to scholarships, let's quickly talk about job losses because at the same time you're saying that uh, you know, the NPP created jobs for a large number of the youth. But at the same time, we're talking about unemployment rates. And, you know, it also is quite high because of the banking sector cleanup and all that. You did mention, the NPP mentioned so, that the Asimpa budget and the Juma budget would consolidate the gains. Are you just it to that of, um, in 2016? 2016, we have almost about 14.9 or so unemployment rate now. We have 13.5 or so. It has declined. Okay. Anyway, my, my, my time is up and I have to go. I wish we could continue with this, unfortunately. But, but George and Nanabi, I have to wrap up now. I'm so sorry. We'll see if we can do a part two of this. Nanabi. We cannot finish without talking about... I know. We will have to make time for another uh, conversation no, on the developments cannot, for the youth in the country. Forgive me, but I'm being counted the down. People, They're going to cut yeah, it. So thank you so much for speaking to us, George. I wish I could come back now, to you, but unfortunately we can't do that. Doing. So George Opariado is the national youth organizer for the NDC and Henry Nanabuachi is the national youth organizer for the NPP. We hope that we can do a part two of this um, at a later date so we can talk more about uh, the level of unemployment and a few other issues that we could have touched on. But this is TV3 New Day. Miss G is coming up with entertainment. Should you rumor to me? Roma insecticide spray and mosquito fell. I don't master. A Roma insecticide spray and No.